How? Oh. There's only one way to go about this. Let's dive right in. We have several teachable moments with my summer blooming fowls, but in case you do not grow these novelty hybrid or species Phalaenopsis, then do not think this video and the information is not for you, because what I'm going to cover applies to our complex Phalaenopsis hybrids as well. Let what is going on in my collection help you out. Give you a heads up so that it does not happen to you. And if it does, then you are well equipped with what immediate action you need to take the moment you see these signs and symptoms. As we proceed with the video, you will see dusty leaves, and there's a reason for that, which will become clear the deeper we dive. Also, I have the clearest example of cold damage as opposed to just an old leaf yellowing that I have ever been able to document. So I am happy to be able to share that footage with you. It's not something that I have been able to document in all these years. Woohoo! Imagine that. Being excited to share something that actually is alarming and threatens orchids. But here we are. Let's make the most of it. So kind of you to be on the other side of the intro. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. As unfortunate that it is what we're going to see here, at least it will serve a purpose and that makes me feel a lot better. But for the sake of my self-esteem, please give this video a thumbs up already and take a moment to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. While this may appear to not be a good video to subscribe to a channel to, <laughs> I can assure you that I grow my orchids without any form of supplemental light, nor do I heat my winter grow space. And for that reason, there are a lot of things that can happen to my orchids. Many things can go wrong and it is that kind of decline that I'm able to share with you which will benefit your orchid collection for the foreseeable future. If I don't get to document things in a timely manner then based on what I just told you know that I can speak on signs and symptoms because of the experiences for the past three winters not doing any supplementing. I believe the hands-on experience is valuable. And while I hate losing orchids, all I can say is at least the sacrifice may serve a purpose so that you won't lose your orchids. I sincerely hope it's not something you will ever be faced with, but never say never. And I hope that videos like these will outweigh the negative by being a positive force for all orchids out and about. One last thing though, to reach growers out and about, please share this video as well. The support is greatly appreciated and who knows, it is possible that there is a grower that does not know they needed this information, then see the video and everything is clear, corrections can be made and all will be well with the Phalaenopsis orchids for years to come. And as a result, you may have just gained yourself a very, very good friend, a grateful new friend. I have these images rolling and they are all dated with examples of the past 12 months and specifically December 19th, 2023. While the exact date is not the key factor, it does point to the time of year, the season, even though I'm growing in southern Spain. It is winter here and it points out just how fast the symptoms appeared and you will see images with an updated date as well to show you how quickly the decline is once the symptoms are visible. It only took a matter of two weeks for these symptoms to become visible to the point that I could take these initial images. And the majority of the leaves that are yellowing are declining for two main reasons, cold temperatures and low light levels. So far, I can determine that there is no stem rot, but it does not mean we are out of the woods with my orchids. But if you see signs of yellowing leaves in your Phalaenopsis orchids that start from the stem outwards, then it is time to get that orchid to warmer temperatures and higher light levels so that she can fight off any further decline of another leaf, seeing as, as long as the decline is because of cold temperatures and lack of light, the orchid is needing the lower structures to continue to provide energy for the growing point. You can see that most of my fowls have actively growing new leaves, but you can also see that most of them are not able to utilize the fertilizer provided two months ago efficiently because the amount of fertilizer they had in their reservoir did not match the conditions they needed in order to photosynthesize and grow in accordance to their natural growth habit. So because they could not take up nutrients because of the cold temperatures and low light levels, they are using their older structures in order to compensate. 
Sometimes it can happen that it is not the oldest leaf that is affected by this cold decline absorption process. Instead, it can be a leaf that is in the second lowest or depending if your orchid has a lot of leaves on the stem, it can be higher up. I do not have any proof of why that happens, excluding stem rot of course, but I'm going to go with a theory that the airflow between those structures turned out to be a tad cooler than elsewhere around the orchid. Not something I can prove, it is an assumption, but it makes the most sense to me. And of course, then sometimes it can happen that a new root tried to push through that part of the bract where the leaf is growing and it cancelled out the nutrient supply enough for the leaf to decline starting at the stem. Normally roots have the ability to push through those bracts or grow up and around them, but not if the orchid does not have the right conditions in order for that active growth to progress. So the root stops growing where it reached the bract, possibly damaged the bract just enough to cut the nutrient supply and while in ideal conditions that wound would heal and the root would continue growing, the leaf would not be compromised. Instead, with colder temperatures, the wound stays open and vulnerable, the root doesn't grow and it could be the onset of some form of rot. Let's look at some examples a little closer and diagnose together, hoping that this will give you a mental checklist of what you're looking at and looking out for. By the way, side note, the spotting you see on the other leaves on some of my orchids is cold damage that started appearing toward the end of winter 2022. Two, just as we were heading into the spring of 2023. So yes, cell collapse without leaf loss, that is what this looks like and they are still around. The newer leaves grew great under ideal conditions, but yeah, that's spotting that is cell collapse due to cold temperatures. Luckily, the warmer temperatures returned in time for the leaf to remain and still function in some way, shape or form. Personally, if I could choose between which leaves would have dropped or will drop, I wish the orchid would have chosen the cell damaged ones because the ones being lost now, they actually looked clean and healthy. <laughs> anyway, c'est la vie. Right, to my examples for closer scrutiny and breakdown, you can see that on my Tabasco text I have lost two leaves off the main stem, but there are no signs of stem rot that I can determine, so I am just going to hold my breath and hope that it will hold on until the warmer temperatures return. The reason I can say that I'm not seeing stem rot so far is because the bracts on which the leaves that fell were attached, they are hardened and dried. But you can clearly see where the root nubbins tried to push through and and then stopped growing because the conditions were not in par with promoting their growth. You can also see that a new flower spike was absorbed, all part and parcel of the orchid taking energy from wherever she can without compromising the growing point. From this image we can see that the lower leaf of the main plant is on its way out, but in a normal fashion, yellowing evenly and not because of cold damage. The texture of the leaf is also dehydrating according with what we see any older leaf would look like. Compared to the leaves that are going yellow because of cold temperatures and low light levels. Those leaves have a wet look about them. They still look plump. Stick around for what I mentioned earlier because I was fascinated by the footage you will see. So let's go back to my Tabasco text because we haven't finished analyzing what's going on here. It grew a fantastic new side plant, which I was super thrilled about. However, that came at a cost energy wise. Again, the growing conditions deteriorated, so the main stem looks to be sacrificing itself for the newer, hopefully stronger plant. Now we also know that if Phalaenopsis will grow a side plant if there's something wrong with the main stem, just to ensure the survival of its kind. Usually some form of rot would trigger that to happen. However, in this case, the side plant grew during a time of year that was ideal and not because of stem rot. So please do not jump to any conclusions just yet as to what is going on with this fowl at this point in time. I don't want to jinx it. Now a quick disclaimer, my Tabasco text can still develop stem rot and both plants will be lost. But what I'm showing you here and the purpose of this video is that this is not a stem rot incident, instead conditions related. Have a look at the image of my Violacea. 
In the winter of 22-23, it lost two leaves mid-stem, while the older leaves are still around. They don't look great, but they are still around. The new leaves that grew throughout the summer of 2023, they might be smaller, but they look normal, and I hope to keep it that way. Fingers crossed, but you can see that the loss of leaves mid-stem does not equate to stem rot, but cold influence. And the fact that a root could not push through the bract because of the lack of ideal conditions to promote promote the continued growth of those roots or root. Instead, it stalled, left a wound, and compromised the leaf at the bract, which in turn compromised nutrients to get to the leaf. In both examples, I have not removed the hardened bract for mere protection purposes. To keep the bract in place, if this were to happen to your fowls, is to ensure a layer of protection from the cold temperatures to the cells around the stem. So that is intentional, and so far the hardened bracts are serving their purpose. I think I've shown plenty of examples for you to get an idea of what to be on the lookout for. Just one final thing before we go to the images of the state of the orchids now. See my Yin's Black Eagle? See the salt buildup on that? Well, several months ago, I did an Epsom salt soak at 300 parts per million in the hopes that I could equip all my fowls for the cold temperatures and low light levels to come. Note to self, for my Yin's Black Eagle, 300 parts per million were far too much. This orchid has not had any fertilizers since and the reservoir is only filled with water at the moment. This orchid also already lost two of its lower leaves based on the conditions. So what we have left are the two leaves that grew in 2023. Fingers crossed that she will hold on for the coming months. And in order to combat the top layer of salt on the media, I am not going to flush because that could be a solution to the problem. But in my case, I'm not going to do that because I don't want any roots to suffer evaporative cooling side effects. All I'm going to do is remove the offensive salty lacquer beads and leave more space around the stem and the media to counteract too high humidity, which could put my orchid at risk of rot. Know that? No amount of airflow during cold conditions will help orchids out to prevent rot. Airflow without adequate heating has an additional cooling effect. That is what has to be avoided, especially in my case. The idea being, if you cannot heat your space adequately for your orchids that you have, then airflow is no bueno. Instead, reduce airflow and reduce the level of the media in your pot. And unfortunately, as in my case now, hope for the best. Fast forward 10 days and here we are with all the candidates again. I have not seen any stem rot yet, but let's look at something that is, in my opinion, super interesting. Remember when I tried to describe the watery look of the leaves, which show signs of decline because of the cold? Well, check this out. And I'm going to stop talking because this needs no commentary. Just watch. Cool, huh? <laughs> I know, I know, I should not be excited to have this happening, but I see it from the point of view that I finally have footage of what I have been trying to describe. You can clearly see how the cells have dissolved inside the outer cuticle, and unless I really squeeze hard, the water within the leaf is easily dispersed past the inner collapsed cell walls without oozing out of the outer cuticles. Oh, I hope I never lose this footage. Now, let me show you as a comparison how an old leaf responds to the same pressure that I applied to the cold damaged leaves. See how that just snaps? There is no inner cell wall damage. 
The leaf is sturdy. It is just an older leaf dying back, not because of cold winter temperatures or low light levels. I don't think the mic picked it up, but with every crack of the leaf, there was a clear, crisp snapping sound. Anyway, I hope that this visual was helpful. I found it to be the coolest thing ever. It would also be so cool if you would remember to subscribe to the channel as well as like the video so as to help it get into the algorithm. I appreciate the support in that regard. Thank you once again. While this video has negative connotations, let me leave you with something positive. <laughs> Pun intended. Get it? Get it? Anyway, thankfully, my corn or Serbi variety Chatelade is holding on strong. I had one leaf go very early in the fall, but the roots unfortunately have stopped growing because, yes, you guessed it, the conditions are less than ideal. So, all this is self preservation and I'm not pushing it. But can you tell what is not happening in this pot? I wish I could give you a moment and see what your replies would be, but this is. Anyway, moving on. There is no salt buildup, and she got 300 parts per million of Epsom salts at the same time as my Yin's Black Eagle did, and behold, she absorbed it all. Again, note to self for late summer 2024, pipe down on all the other fowls that have the salt buildup, and Lady Chatterley is good with 300 parts per million. Now I have a question for you. After hearing all of this, do you know why my leaves are dusty? Why I'm not wiping down my leaves? If so, or if not, either way, let me know your thoughts in the comments and we can get into that in greater detail if need be. This video is already much longer than I had anticipated, but I hope it covered all the bases, providing you with information that will help you out moving forward. If you've made it all the way to the end and watched the entire video, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time and the support that comes with it. I also get to wish you a fabulous day. However, I attach a condition to that, that you please stay safe. Take care. Bye.